Hi, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ. In this lesson, the 15 most important solo drills you should practice to be an effective martial artist. All right, so this video is gonna be a complete overview of our entire white belt curriculum. So these are exercises that anybody can do, regardless of age or fitness level. And these are exercises that every complete martial artist should practice on a regular basis from white belt all the way to black belt. So we have very simple variations. We're gonna give you a few more advanced variations as well. But for each one of those techniques, we do have a complete tutorial with a lot more variations and subtleties for each one of those techniques. This is meant as an overview video. Either if you're just starting, you wanna get a bird's eye view, or if you've seen these techniques before, it's gonna be very good for you to review in one convenient place and one concise format. So let's get started. The first aspect we're gonna cover before we move on to techniques for grappling, striking, and wrestling, we're gonna cover basic fitness. So the four basic fitness exercises for each one of the major muscle groups in the human body. First one is the squat. So we wanna be able to do a squat with our knees above our toes and bring our hips the same height as our knees. Here, so knees remain above the toes and hips go down nice and low. Now the most common mistake for the squat is having the back round. So we want to have the back straight. Here, when you go down, sticking your bum out and chest out and looking up. Here, basic squat. A lot of people, you're going to do here, the back comes round and this is not the correct execution of the squat. It's going to put too much strain on the lower back and it's not going to engage the legs as much as we want to. We want to correct that. Here, boom, back straight. Hips out, looking up, that's the basic squat. Moving on, for the core or the abs, we want to be able to do ball crunches, otherwise known as guard seals. This is really important to be able to close our guard. We want to bring our knees to our chest and having our feet pointing up and not holding our legs. Most common mistake, people are going to hold their legs. Now, if you're really challenged in terms of strength in the core, you can do that as a starting uh, point to hold your legs. So you can at least get a rocking motion with your back round. But the goal is to be able to do that without holding your legs. You want your core muscles to work. So having your knees in your chest, ideally touching your shoulders would be even better. You can have your hands in the middle over here or your hands on the outside. We really want to have your tension in the abs. So that's ball crunches, otherwise known as guard seals. Very important for grappling and foundational to have strength in the abs. Next one is going to be for the back. Also very important and specifically important for posture. Slow motion fly claps. So we're gonna be here on our stomach and we wanna be able to have our thumbs pointing up the whole time. Now we want our feet above the ground and our knees not touching the ground. Head as high as you can and hands as high as you can and as slow as possible, go all the way up, hands touch in front and we go all the way back as far as we can go while maintaining our thumbs elevated. This is gonna hit all the muscles in the back and it's also gonna practice our rotator cuffs which is really important for shoulder joint health. Very important to prevent any tendonitis or muscle imbalances in the shoulder. So very good for posture and joint health long-term. The last fitness exercise that's foundational is the basic push-up. Now, we're gonna give you the bare bones minimum requirement for the push-up, and the most common mistake is people often don't engage the abs enough. So, you can do it on the knees, it's fine. You can do it on the hands, it's fine. Bonus points if you can do it on the knuckles as well, especially if you have a soft surface, this is gonna be very useful to develop punching power and strengthen the wrist. Now, the most common mistake is people don't engage the abs as they're doing the push-up. So they're gonna have their hips kind of slagging in the back here, and the lower back is gonna curve. So it's gonna look something like this, or the hips are gonna to go too far down, and it's gonna look something like this. In both cases, it's because there's no tension in the abs. So we can correct that by squeezing our abs here. So hips relaxed, here abs relaxed, abs tight. Notice this eliminates the curve in the lower back when I squeeze my abs. Abs relaxed, abs contracted. Also we maintain the alignment, legs with the upper body here. As we go down we want to maintain that contraction in the abs and maintain that position in the body here. It's okay to go only halfway down if that's all you can do. If you're a little bit stronger you can go all the way down here, chest almost touches the ground but not quite. And another common mistake to avoid is to reach for the ground with your head like this. We don't want to do that. We want to reach with our chest like so. Now, if you're a little bit stronger, you could do it on the feet as well. Also, very important, maintain that contraction in the abs. Go down here and go up. Perfect. Push up while maintaining contraction in the abs. 
Now, for some very young kids, sometimes it's a little bit more challenging to maintain that contraction in the abs. So we want to be too, we don't be too strict on that. Um, especially very young kids, you could do this variation here where we start on the hands and feet, and we're just going to go up any which way, and that's better than nothing. Okay, so as we get stronger, we're going to develop that over time. But if you can do it on the knees, contract the abs up and down. So that's for fitness. Moving on, basic grappling. So we're gonna quick, quick overview of all the main techniques. First one, the seven basic grappling postures. So grappling postures, we wanna be able to be in the fighting stance like so. And if the person is on the bottom here, we're gonna modify our fighting stance by having a front knee bent and the hands down because we're ready to grapple. Next up, we wanna be able to go to a crouching stance like so. We're sitting on one heel and we're on both feet. So we wanna be able to move comfortably in this position while keeping our hips really low and we can take steps front and back Grappling position, crouching position. From here, we want to go to combat base where we put one knee on the ground. Very simple, combat base. Live toes here or dead toes here. And again, we want to be able to do that on both sides. Next up for top position, kneeling here with the knees nice and wide, more often than not, and hips nice and low. So we're sitting on the heels, so we have a nice wide base and low center of mass with our elbows close to our body. Moving on from the bottom, we want to be able to go to a seated position like so. Now, seated position, we want to have Left foot, right hand, so cross body stability. There are exceptions, but this is the rule in general. So here, and if we switch legs, we're also gonna switch hands. So that way we have diagonal stability on the body. One hand protects, and one hand is served for base. You can switch like this. We also wanna be straight, seated like this, elbows going down the shins over here. And most common mistake here, people are too upright. You wanna have your head far forward here, so we have a nice base with our hips, and we can resist from here. So that's our seated position, either staggered or straight. And next one, probably the most challenging of the ground positions is the supine position, like so. So here we wanna have, again, our knees in our chest and our elbows in contact with our knees. This is gonna seal our guard in a supine position. So somebody can't just go around and pin us on the ground. We we'll wanna have our legs and our hands, our frames in place. So that's a straight supine position. Here, again, we're not grabbing our legs, we're bringing our knees to our chest and our knees, our elbows in contact with our knees. Straight or sideways here, where we go one foot on the ground and the other foot in the air, and again, elbows are still in contact with the knees. Here, and we can switch from side to side, like so, side supine position. The last bottom position is the turtle position. So we're here, we wanna go on our knees here, so kind of like the kneeling position we were before, but now we're either on our hands, our elbows, so this is gonna be the open turtle position here where the person is in front of us, or if they start getting behind us, we want to protect our hooks, so we don't want them to get control here. We're going to get our elbows to our ribs and posting on the forehead. So closed turtle, open turtle. Those are the seven basic grappling postures. Moving on, for grappling, the basic shrimp. So we're going to do only the two main variations, which are the seated shrimp and supine shrimp. So seated shrimp, always otherwise known as the scoot, from the seated position, outside foot here, close to the hip, basing, and we're sliding our hips back like this. That's the backwards one. And then if you want to go forward, we're just going to pull ourselves forward like this. We're moving our hips back and moving our hips forward. And we want to be able to do that on both sides. Here. Even better if you can slide a little bit and cover more distance. Okay? And then we also want to be able to spin on the bum like so. Moving on, the supine shrimp, or from our back here, a little bit more challenging. So we want to have our outside foot on the ground here. We want to put all the weight on the foot and the inside shoulder, elevating the hips. Hips are not touching the ground, so we need a little bit of core strength here. Shoulder doesn't move, foot doesn't move, extend the leg, slide the hips, okay? Again, we have a complete video on the shrimp, so if you want more details, watch that one. Here, outside and in, on the side here. Foot posts, weight on the shoulder, extend the leg, slide the hips. Common mistake is the foot is gonna slide or the shoulder's gonna slide. Foot doesn't move, shoulder doesn't move, hips move, here. So the goal is to develop that hip mobility, like so, okay, supine shrimp. Moving on, the bridge, elevating our hips. So once our guard has been passed, we want to be able to create space by moving our hips. So here, hips up, I want to go on one shoulder. Basic would be just to lift the hips straight, and more applied variation, we're usually going to go to the side like this to push somebody off of us. We also want to be able to roll, so bridge and roll, all the way to turtle position. So here, going up on the shoulder, hips stay high, Basing with the hands, foot leaves the ground, connects with the elbow, and we land on knees here, elbows and knees connected, 
possibly open turtle, and then going to kneeling position like so. Other side, bridge, here, reach, stabilize, hips remain high, not dropping the hips on the ground. Hips remain high, go over, here, and land in the kneeling position. So bridge and roll. Moving on, basic rolls. So rolling forward, rolling backwards. Before we're able to roll, we have to be able to rock. So we wanna be able, again, to have that rocking motion, keeping the back round, ideally without holding the legs. But if the core strength is not there yet, you can definitely hold the legs just to have that rocking motion going on. You wanna be able to go from one hip, a little bit more advanced, one hip to opposite shoulder, throwing the legs above over here, basing on the toes, and going back over here, possibly going up to combat base over here. And if we can complete the thing here, the roll, and get all the way to combat base in the back. Rocking, rolling on the shoulder, here, over our base, maintaining our round back, and here, and here, like so. Same thing on the other side, shoulder, opposite hip, hip, the opposite shoulder. Rolling forward and back. Last, grappling basic technique. No, one, one more after that. The shoulder roll, a little bit more challenging. So for the newer students, don't sweat it if you're uh, having trouble with that one. But shoulder roll, first step, being able to do the final position here. It's gonna stretch the neck muscles a little bit. So you need to work on that regularly if you don't yet have that flexibility in the neck. You wanna be able to have your toes touching the ground here. And you can see it's compressing my chest a little bit, so my voice changes. Here, so you wanna be able to stable like this. Elbow stabilize, breathe, relax. From here, you wanna be able to go shoulder to shoulder, like so, and eventually be able to go all the way to the seat position, like so. Now the challenging part is be able to do the first part of the shoulder roll. Again, we have a complete video for that. But we wanna essentially fall on our side, scissor our legs, elevate the hips, tuck the head in between the knees so we wind up in the same position we were earlier. We're stabilizing with the elbows so we don't roll away. The back stays off the ground and then we complete the roll here to seated on the other side. Once again, here, shoulder, scissor, elevate, tuck the head, stabilize the elbows, and go around, and we obviously want to be able to do that in a smooth manner here. And again, it necessitates a little bit of flexibility in your neck, so don't sweat it if you don't have it already. Last, grappling basic technique is going to be leg dexterity. So there's many different drills for leg dexterity, but the foundational one is going to be the pummeling motion like so. So notice, I'm moving the knees, I'm moving the ankles, moving the toes, and I'm moving the hips as well. So this is small pummels. I could do the other side as well. Legs are moving alternating, and the hips are moving side to side. So it's a great ab workout at the same time. And we also want to be able to do it with bigger circles like this, so using the full range of the hip joint as well. Outside or inside. Here, reaching far. Again, we have a complete video for that. Moving on, striking. So for striking, we're just gonna focus on the most important techniques. So the first one is definitely the fighting stance. We wanna have our three things. Feet wide, knees bent, chin down. As long as you have that going on, you're pretty well off. So we wanna be able to move. So fighting stance, first thing, and then basic mobility. Move forward, move backwards, move side to side, pivot, change levels. Wherever we go though, feet are always wide. So we never wanna be caught with our feet too close together and we never, never want to lock out our knees. Feet wide, knees bent, and chin down. We never want to rise up our chin either as well, so chin down. Now the basic configuration of the hands, we want to have the back hand glued to the face, and lead shoulder cupping the chin as well, so we're nice and protected in this position here. So our chin is our most vulnerable target in the upper body, we always want to protect it. And we want to be able to do that on both sides as well. We have a complete video on the fighting stance. Uh, we also want to be able to do the fighting twist here, and this is going to be really important for our punches. So we're not gonna focus on all the punches in this quick overview video, but we must be able to do the jab and the cross. Those are the most important ones. So the jab here, knee points forward. I'm just gonna transfer a little bit of weight forward and extend the hand here and come right back. Looking where I wanna go, extend. I wanna have my shoulder come to my chin over here and come right back. Here, the jab. I wanna build that on both sides. Jab and the cross is the same upper body position but now I'm gonna engage what we call the fighting twist. So we go in detail with a lot of variations in the fighting stance video, but here I wanna be able to push off the ground, 
Turn my heel, turn my hips, turn my shoulders, and extend here, which is gonna give power to my cross. And then come right back, okay, cross. Most common mistake here is either people lean into it, so the head is no longer above the feet, which would be a critical mistake in the fighting stance, we wanna keep our head above our feet, or they don't twist enough, so they try to punch like this. And that's gonna really affect our range. Again, there's times when we wanna do that, if the person is right there, we can just punch him, but we wanna be able to engage the full range and full power of our cross here by having a full twist and extension of the body. So we're basically aligning the shoulders. Whereas I'm in a fighting stance over here, lead shoulder. Now my back shoulder becomes my lead shoulder and the lead shoulder becomes the back shoulder. So the fist, shoulder, and other shoulder form a straight line to hit the target like so. So we really want to engage our whole body and have a nice fighting twist. A little bit more advanced, you want to be able to do jack cross together and you want to create a little bit of mobility. So you want to ideally step into the punch and then disengage after, or even more advanced, jab cross and then cut an angle. Here left or right, okay? Either side and again, doing this on both sides. So jab and cross, those are the most important punches. Next, the most important kick is definitely gonna be the round kick. So for this one, we're basically throwing our leg at the target here. So we're engaging, again, our whole body. We have a complete video on how to kick and we put a lot of emphasis on the round kick. But here, pushing, so loading the, the leg, stepping into it, swinging the upper body, and creating momentum with this upper body. Legs push, leaves the ground, and here, at mid-range, pop the hips. Here, pivot on the bottom foot and recover, bend the knees, back in the fighting stance. Let me show you a few times, slowly at first. Low step, swing, whip, and recover. A little bit faster, here, 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 and then faster. Eventually it all blends together. And really swing the leg and recover quickly. Round kick. Low is great to start, okay? And even for those who are uh, not yet comfortable with the basic punches, focus on that first, because kicking is also an added risk. You can have your leg caught and lose your balance and whatnot, so basic striking attack, jab and cross. Make sure you engage those hips and those shoulders. Moving on, basic defense for striking is gonna be our turtle block. So we want to be able to have good mobility is gonna be our first line of defense. So just not being there when the strike comes, that's gonna be ideal. But if we do get hit, we wanna be able to protect ourselves, especially in the most vital areas, which are the chin and the nose. We wanna be able to hold here. Chin is down, hands here on the forehead, they can also be knuckles over here or below here, and our chin is low, and as the strike comes, we either go towards the strike or away from the strike. So that's protecting the face against incoming strikes. Again, this is gonna be a temporary solution. We get hit and then we disengage, or on the side here for a hook or for possibly a kick, we're gonna do what we call answer the phone. So sliding the hand over here and tipping the head to the side like so. So we're blocking the strike over here. Notice the alignment we're braced for impact here, and the shoulder's protecting, the forearm is protecting. We have a nice shield in place like a helmet, and we're ready to block left or right. So we're gonna focus on head blocks here. There's other defensive techniques, deviations, blocks, and techniques you can do with the legs, but the most important one, turtle block. Here, 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 okay? Having a good last line of defense, and first line of defense is gonna be our fighting stance and mobility. So that's for striking. Last segment is gonna be wrestling. Very simple for wrestling, there's only four techniques, a couple variations for each, but we're just gonna focus on the most basic one. So first off, we wanna be able to attack in wrestling. And how we're gonna attack is gonna be with a shoot or a shot. That's gonna start with a level change and then a penetration step. So the basic shot in wrestling, so setups can be multiple, you go for a jab, you go in, head movements, we're not gonna focus on that right now, we're just gonna focus on the body mechanics. So here, we're gonna have our feet Ideally in line with the target, so we're going to go in detail on the uh, shooting video, but essentially change our level over here, so we bring the chest to the lead knee. Very important, head up, okay? We do not want to be looking down when you shoot in. You want your head up, and you want your hips lower than your shoulders. Common mistake is people dive in like this, and that's going to be a disaster in terms of your effectiveness, and also going to make you vulnerable. So we want to have good body mechanics. That's why it's important to have a nice squat like we mentioned in the beginning. So here, go down like so, and we wanna have this back leg in a position where we feel strong with this leg. We feel, this is where the power comes from. 
So we notice my body is like an arrow. From here, I want to be able to push. Front knee goes to the ground here, softly. So I'm low and I just step on the knee. I don't fall on the knee. Grab the legs and then I'm going to go to a squat position and imagining we're finishing a double leg takedown. Again, we want to be able to do that on both sides. So we're here, fighting stance, change levels, chest to lead knee, legs nice and wide, feel strong with the back leg, push with the back leg, front knee goes to the ground softly, so we step on it, step, step, and squat. Now if you're on a hard surface, or sometimes if you're going more for speed rather than level, you can also forgo the knee to the, to the ground variation. So you could just go here, and the knee comes close to the ground, but then you move straight to the squat position, like so. A little bit faster, level change, penetration step, here, here, and here. And a little bit faster, and really engaging the push of the back leg. Ideally, you want to be able to do it full speed and really aggressive. Moving on, basic wrestling defense techniques. There are many, we're going to focus on only two. First one is going to be the sprawl. So, we want to be able to block somebody with our hips. They're coming in to take us down, they want control of our legs. We want to get our legs out of the way and put our hips to create a barrier in between that person and our legs. So, they get in here, possibly having a grip on our legs. We're going to put our hands down here, ideally on the inside, but sometimes we're going to wind up on top. And we want to kick our legs back, so how we're going to do it? We're going to put our hands on the ground here, basic variation. We're going to put our knees on the ground over here, and then we're going to kick back, and we're going to land on one hip. Wherever the head of the person is, we're going to face their head, and we're going to try, most important aspect of the sprawl, to hold their head down. Now, for athletic purposes, you might need both hands to support yourself. That's fine, but imagine that you would be posting on the person's head, here. And from there, we want to be able to pop right back up to our feet, here, and here. Okay? Other side, same thing, person shoots in, I want to protect my legs, I'm going to put my hands on the ground up here, shoot to the knees, boom, hip down. Also common mistake, people go down with the chest. You don't want to do that, you want to keep your head high and your chest high and arms almost straight, okay, it's like bending the elbows. That's going to allow you to have good posture, put weight on the person and have your hips as a blockade. And then we pop back up, again, a bit faster, we sprawl, here. And a little bit more advanced variation, if you're able to, we're gonna post on one hand, we're gonna imagine this hand is gonna control the head, like so. And when we get up, also, more advanced, we wanna be able to get up in a circular motion. You don't wanna stay in front of the person that's attacking you. So here, sprawl, ideally, one hand, boom. Go to the side and get up in a circular motion. And from there, we wanna go back on the offensive. The more tactical consideration, we defend, go back on the offense. Last. Basic technique, one before last, two more. Falling, so this is commonly taught in a suboptimal way. Here we're gonna focus, when we do go to the ground, we're gonna do what we call the seated fall. So, we ideally never wanna go to our backs if we can avoid it. So this is the technique we're gonna practice instead. Imagine a person grabs their legs and we can't sprawl, legs are, are caught. What we can do though is bend forward and bring our bum to the ground. So, we're gonna walk just here, the foot behind over here, we're gonna crouch down, hand goes on the ground, here, and then we're gonna extend the leg, like the scooting motion that we did at the beginning, grappling, here. So I bring the, leg, the hips nice and far back, and the head forward. From here, I'm on the ground, but I have good base. It requires a lot of pressure to get me all the way to my back, which is what I don't want. So I wanna stay forward, facing with the hand, bring my leg back, and the last technique is gonna be the technical stand-up. So this one, also known as the hip heist, here, I want to reset my base. I want to go back to my feet. Okay, I want to do it efficiently, and I want to do it without moving forward, because remember, there's pressure on me, or if it's a striking situation, there's possibly strikes that can come my way. So I don't want to bring my head forward in this situation. There are situations where we would want to. So here, I want to get this leg here. Elevate the hip, so I'm on one foot, and the opposite hand, diagonal control, and then get this leg under me here, posting, if necessary, on the knee first. If possible, I want to bring it all the way through and wind up in my squat stance, like we practiced at the beginning. That's another reason I want to have a good squat stance. And from there, I have a good base. I can comfortably stand up, or I can even go back on the offense if I choose to do so. Once again, from the other side, if I can't sprawl, seated fall here, person takes me down, I can't get the legs free, I bring the foot, so I cross the foot back over here, I go down, I base on the hand softly, we don't want to hurt our shoulder, and then I extend my legs to shoot my hips back here, and I, I wind up in the seated position for grappling. From here, reset the base, 
We set the foot, get the leg all the way under the foot and the opposite hand, ideally to the squat stance, but if necessary, kneeling here, so kind of a modified combat base, and then step back to the standing position. One more time, here, I go down, and then if you can do it faster, that's even better, okay? Breathing out, and ideally also sliding the hips. Here, you can also do it in a circular motion. Imagine the person is cutting the corner, taking you down at an angle, here, falling, and getting up, all the way back to our fighting stance, from which point you can disengage or go back on the offense. Okay, so this is the complete overview of our basic white belt curriculum. Again, we encourage you to watch the detailed video for each one of those techniques because there are a lot of different subtleties, a lot of cool drills that we're gonna cover in each one of those videos. But again, if you're just starting out, this is a very good place to start to get a good bird's eye view of the entire curriculum and the most important techniques that you need to know to maneuver your body efficiently in grappling, striking, and wrestling. So, hope you've enjoyed. Leave us a comment below if you found this video helpful. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel right now. We're really excited about what's coming up. This is the white belt curriculum that we're just wrapping up. Uh, so that's all solo movements. But now we're gonna get into yellow belt, more partner applications, principles of training, so how to train safely with a partner, uh, how to train effectively as well to develop real skills using the concept of progressive resistance. More on this later. Um, and yeah, really excited about all the techniques, the cool techniques, concepts, and drills that we got coming for you guys. So if you haven't already, subscribe right now. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for being there. It's a privilege to be able to share this information with you. Signing off, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ. Thank you very much for watching. Practice well.